Welcome to the Daily Addictions channel. Today I'm going to be talking about an animated show called Star Trek Lower Decks Season 1. First off, I am a huge fan of Star Trek. If you look through my podcast, you'll see I did one for, I think, every TV series. Not the movies yet. This is an animated show that a friend told me. I knew it was coming out, but I stayed away from most of the uh, tidbits about it. But he told me it was out and that he loved it. I watched it and I loved the show. I had such a great experience watching it. And being a fan, it just made it better. However, afterwards, as I normally do, I'll go and see other people's opinions. And I was surprised to see... A small segment who trashed the show. But I'll get into that in a little bit. So back in the day when Discovery first came out, when they were developing, I guess, Picard, the guy who ran it had a deal to expand the Star Trek universe. So that's where this came in, and I'm happy it was done. Now, the voice acting is great, and there's only one or two names I actually notice. We got Tony Newsom, Jack Quaid, Noel Wells, Eugene Cordero. And you've got other voices too and people that this can actually enrich because you can get other actors from the shows that were on, the live action shows, and put them in because it actually takes place in 2380, which is still in that timeline where you can keep... um, you know, uh, Jonathan Franks as Riker, Deanna Troy. You could put them in the show and have their voices and lend to them. The animation style is is not it's not the most artistic best thing, but it works so well. The irreverent humor for season one it just gets me. It really appeals to me, and I am a really big Star Trek fan. I have a big problem these days with the new Star Trek. So, when you look at the Chris Pine movies, I was never really on board. I can enjoy some, oh, I'm going to send three of them, but I enjoy some aspects of them, but they don't really catch me. The TV shows now, so let's start with Discovery, is... It lackluster to me. It looks beautiful and some great acting and great pieces, but it's not my Star Trek, and I can come to terms with that. Hey, you know, I'm from the original, well, I wasn't born, but I grew up with the original Star Trek with Kirk on repeat, and this is the first animated show since their animated show, which was like, you know, a short-lived series. But there was a Star Trek, the animated series back in the day. So we have these voice actors, like I said. You even got um, Haley Joe Osment, I think is it. Yeah, I see Dead People Kid. He does a voice on the show. So the voice acting is spot on. The humor is awesome and funny, irreverent. It's an adult series, I think. And there's a weirdness to where it's on CBS All Access, which is, I think, being rebranded as Paramount Plus, which is a nightmare because... When I first started thinking about, oh, Discovery's coming, I gotta watch Discovery. Because I'm gonna give I'm gonna give credit to Star Trek Enterprise. I did not give it credit. The opening song was so terrible that it was biased to me. But when I gave that show a chance and watched the four seasons of it, I really enjoy it and I like it. Borderline love it. It really pays homage to the characters and finds its place in the series. It's a shame it only went four seasons. This seems out of place to some, from what I can tell, what the other people's reviews or opinions on it. But I think it's great. It is invigorating. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that if it wasn't for this show, I don't think Discovery or Picard would get any of the um, respect or uh, attention that they deserve. This is a show that I could see really lasting a long time. It's got a great focus where 
its principal characters are the side characters and the captains and the um first officers are just you know side characters ancillary characters the ship has its own persona in a way it's, i think it's the cerebros and, um you're looking at the lower deck characters and they really do a good job you find out well i don't give lots of plots and stuff but it's an animated show it's the first season's over but you find out that one of the ensigns who the main character her mother is the captain and these episodes get so off the wall crazy i love some of the um you know aspects that each character has they give a good um diversity of uh emotions and like character quirks about people you know there's one guy has the bug or cybernetic parts and they each have their own strengths and weaknesses and they gotta come together as the ensigns and the um guys who run the lower decks uh, guys and girls who run the lower decks and come and save the day and it's so much fun it's one thing i'm going to recommend give the show a chance i mean fans of star trek i could see certain aspects of them finding it ridiculous maybe even i don't know disrespectful or offensive well i think picard was this <laughs> was offensive and disrespectful i'm not a fan of this new age star trek and yes i might have to come to terms that it's not for me anymore that they're trying to rebrand it and give it a a, a new life or a new age i'm fine with that and i don't know if i'll ever get to season three of discovery i don't want to watch season two of picard i really thought that show went off the rails and just became a patrick stewart uh centerpiece of you know patrick stewart not pa captain picard but i did do a podcast on that as i did for discovery also so when this came out and it's such a breath of fresh air for me i was so thrilled you you chew through this content the first season's got 10 episodes and they have a great way of showcasing the characters and some of the um criticism i've seen really seems to be just how can they do star trek and make it so adult uh you know oriented but it's a cartoon and it has silly premises look there was a scene i think it's um let's talk about a different show i think it's a uh, family guy and it's i think seven minutes of everybody vomiting <laughs> i don't forgot what it was that starts it like you know so the guy the father and then the son and the dog and this is vomiting everybody. and it's a gift now it's that kind of human irreverent but there's good stories there underneath it the growth of the characters you watch them have to learn to work together and the what you first see as the rebel who doesn't care uh character the daughter uh what i think her name is what her name is uh Ma beckett mariner and you think that um she just wants to break the rules but she actually is really good at stuff and kind of figures things out you got the um i think the guys from the boys or something like that plays the other main character and you know there's no self-esteem and they got to get confidence and pride and what they can do well work together and like i said you don't get the um captain first officer major officer influence uh you would think you would because it's a central thing no it's just a fun adventure story in the star trek universe with space aliens and alien contact new world to discover but from the perspective of these fucking you know misfits in a, in a better sense uh who have to come together and see the you know um the strengths and weaknesses of each other and what they join starfleet for and that's a little bit of a it gets a little deeper here and there with the daughter and the I think the mother wants to get her off the ship. There's just, um, this is so much good in this. And I think it's um, greenlit for season three. 
a season two is going to be coming out. I can't wait for it. The casting was spot on. Like I said, there's no, like I know some of the names here and there, but uh, it's got a great setup for bringing in actors. And I think they've already had Riker or Troy. And there's just so much to love about the show. And I'm really a little surprised at this little niche group that really railed against it in a way. I mean, yeah, okay, the animation is not like breakthrough in that sense. It's not going to wow people's um, like, oh, great style. But it really works well with what they're trying to do. And even the ship, which is kind of like a thing for me, I'm really a stickler for these things. I thought I would be one of the guys agreeing. Um, or actually, one of the people who would be turned off almost immediately. I I guess it's just, it is such a big separation between how serious and real and movie action they're trying to make discovery or how the the political landscape of Picard with the synth ban and the Romulans and this uh, xenophobia and racism type stuff and doesn't feel like Captain Picard, although Discovery has its moments of feeling like Star Trek to me. This is a breath of fresh air. It's so much fun you get uh, to see these characters explore what it's like to be on the lower decks and explore each other's characteristics and interactions that have to make them grow into a family. And I think they do it spot on. You can't I can't get enough of it. It's just, you know, yeah, I think the Jack Wade character is, um, yeah, he's one of the guys from the boys. So just really good all around show. If you like irreverent humor, I don't know. Can I put this in the Archer or the Harlequin animated series where they take chances and, you know, you can see it being off-putting to some people. I just think this is what's going to save Star Trek right now. I don't believe if they didn't put so much money and so much dedication into the hype of Picard and season two or uh, three of Discovery, this show is what's going to be the backbone. It's just amazing to me that this is a adult comedy animated show, and it just is more Star Trek to me than the movies and the new TV shows. There is something that I did see, and I think it has to do with uh, Season 2 of Discovery brought in the original Enterprise and Captain Pike. Now, I did like that aspect. I liked the actor and uh, who they cast for the crew. And I think they're going with Strange New Worlds. I don't know what it's called exactly, but there's it was supposed to be a new show with Captain Pike as the Enterprise captain. That I'm interested in. But this Discovery now, Season 3 went to the future. I never got out. I never caught up to it. I have no real major interest. Although I do love the actress and some of the characters. It just doesn't appeal to me. However, we're talking about Star Trek Lower Decks Season 1. Uh, adult comedy and animated show that nails it for me. It captures the spirit of Star Trek and even more because you can really showcase these characters in a different way. You might have like an episode or two on traditional The Next Generation or Voyager and uh, it in Deep Space Nine where you'll have an episode or two that focuses on the new recruits, right? Or the cadets. And there were some pretty good ones, too, especially dealing with Wesley Crusher and some of the other aspects of the next generation. And here you get to focus on them and see the growth, see the interactions, the bonds they start forming, how they feel inadequate. And it's just a great way to highlight the comedy. I totally recommend Star Trek Lower Decks. If you don't know anything about Star Trek, you could still get into the show because it is funny and it has it hits all the right beats it it you know funny is funny and it's just set in the star trek world which i think lends to it it just 
I am, you know, I can see, though, some of the people not liking it because of Star Trek and their love for maybe what's serious, what makes um, some of the episodes of Next Generation Voyager really stand out is the drama, um, the stakes of political uh, machinations and um, stellar phenomenon that could wipe out civilizations. It's all weight and really serious stuff. And there are comedy episodes here and there throughout the live action shows. But here they're taking a chance. They're taking Star Trek, uh, the premise of the ensigns and the rookies and the, the people who work the lower decks, and making an irreverent comedy out of it. And it just works. I don't know if this will bite them in the ass one day in that in that way but i think when people look at it it's just it's breathing a new life into star trek you can have your serious stuff if you want to chris pine star trek they're there and there are good aspects of those those movies and i'm sure people will like discovery and picard sure there is stuff to like in there too and granted i'll give it that but it's not going to wow me what they did with um, Picard, it, it, it's more, um, they just went wrong. I could probably try to critique that. Discovery, it tried. This one, I think, is saying, hey, look, we have this idea, this premise, we're going to make our own way. And I think it really surprised me. It's surprising a lot of people who at first might be like me and like, you know, oh, I'm real serious. I love my Star Trek. I go back to the original series. Uh, even the movies I love, even the, I guess the next generation movies kind of, you know, well, I guess it's a give and take, and that's the great thing about being subjective and taste and what you like. I don't think this can be criticized that much, and most of the ones I see are just like a little biased, and that's fine. You have a love for Star Trek, you want to keep it serious, don't watch it then, you know. I, I I don't mind, you know, watching characters, you know, just go bonkers and, you know, you're taking these, uh, what looks like a normal episode on Star Trek Next Generation where you go, they go to meet the council of a, a planetary system and things happen. This is like, oh my God, no, well, there's a, a plague we let loose in the kitchen and while that's going on with Picard like you can see like the lower decks going crazy trying to fix everything and there are deep moments there are real close bonding of characters and understanding of growth a good balancing act here all across the board I recommend Star Trek lower decks give it a shot even if you don't like Star Trek it's that good it's that funny I put it in there with, like I said, maybe Archer, and Archer is just classic now. It's just, uh, it should win so many awards. And Harley Quinn animated series where they take chances with some of the humor, and you might even offend some of the people who love the original work, what it's based off of. But I get a kick out of it. I love it. Give it a shot. Be well, everybody. I'll talk to you all soon. Bye-bye.